All right, so for lesson 1.2, displaying quantitative data, we're gonna go through this little problem. So the, dis the dot plot displays the scores of 21 statistics students on a 20 point quiz. So what percent of students scored higher than 16 points? So higher than the 16 points. So we're gonna look at this and let me get this set up to actually draw in here. I forgot to get that set up. My bad. Okay. Alright. So, with this, what percent of students were higher than 16? So, but well, we know we have 21 total, so for sure now we got 21. So higher than 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. I count 17. You can double check, but I look like I got 17 there. Okay. So for 17 over 21, I already did the math. You did the calculator. That should come out to 0 0.81 which in turn, you can leave it as that, or you can say 81%, okay? So 81% of the students scored higher than 16 points. So now it says, describe the shape of the distribution. So it's looking at the shape, the shape, let's try low, going up high, right? So if it looks like that, we're simply going to look down at our feet. And which foot does that look like? It should look like your left foot, right? So we're going to say that this is skewed left. This other one, we got, are there any potential outliers and why? So if we're looking at this, any potential outliers? Well, there's a good group right here. Then it kind of just spreads out a little bit, right? Now granted, these aren't too far apart from each other, but it's really stretched this 11 looks like it's really stretched from all the other main data, right? It's kind of really getting out there. So I'm just going to say, not by doing any calculations yet, so we haven't got that done. But I'm just going to say, so therefore, potential outliers, I'm going to say 1 potential outlier. is number 11. And the reason why is because it is much lower than the rest of the data. It is much lower than the rest of the data. Okay, so again, that's one potential outlier is number 11, and it is much lower than the rest of the data. So yes, these are how to answer these problems. It takes a little bit of writing it. You can't just write a number on these. Statistics, you gotta explain and give a justification for your answers. So that's what we got there for that first part. So the second one here, we got here is a back to back stem plot. I know we haven't talked about that yet. We'll talk about it right here though. Back to back stem plot of 19 middle school students uh, resting pulse rates and their pulse rates after five minutes of running. Write a few sentences comparing the distributions of resting and after exercise pulse rates. So, right off the bat with comparing distributions, well, what should you think of using? What acronym? 
Hopefully the first thing that came to mind was socks. Alright, and that would be perfect. Hopefully that came out to be exactly what you thought of, okay? So with socks, for our shape. So if you were to do this, again, you kind of have to turn these a little bit. So you can turn this one, it's your starting point. It's going like that. Okay. Start from zero. And starting from zero here, it's still going a high and coming down this way. Well, if this is your zero point, your starting point, for drawing these curves, right? No matter which way, they are both the resting pulse rates and the exercise pulse rates are both similarly skewed right. So I would say, uh, to see. Distribution. Of both are similarly are similarly skewed right. Okay, the distribution of both are similarly skewed right. Now with your outliers. So with these, again, we're not doing any calculations with this yet. And looks like we possibly have a couple outliers here, right? So you could have this one at 120 for those guys, and you can have this one at 146 for the after exercise. So with this, I would say resting as a possible Outlier at one twenty and after exercise possible. at 146. So again, I know I'm spitting these numbers out here and make sure everybody understands how to read these, okay? So we already see the little circles here so we can see these numbers a little bit better. Okay? So these aren't red left to right on this side. This isn't 86, 96, this isn't 07, 17, no. Your stem always goes first. This is a leaf, and this side's a leaf, okay? Let's see, put purple. So this is your leaf, stem, leaf, okay? So with that, this number is 68, 68, 68, 69, and so forth. When you give the tens, this would be 104, that's 120. Over here on the after exercise, this is 118, this is 124, 124, 
146. The key to all of this, right down here, is important that for you know, it's saying A2 is a student whose pulse rate is 82 beats per minute. So therefore, you're reading these as 68 beats per minute, 90 beats per minute, 90 beats per minute on the after exercise, 96 on resting, then 92 after exercise, 92 after exercise. So that is how you read the back-to-back -back stem plot. Now back to center. Now our center, we're going to say with this one, we're just going to compare them. So which one of these would you say has a higher center point? Well, it looks like resting has the center point is around, you know, in the 70s range, okay? However, an after exercise is in the 90s range, okay? So I will say something simple. The center is higher for the after exercise pulse rates. So the center is higher for the after exercise pulse rates. Now for our spread or our range, right? With these, the after exercise may be a bit higher, maybe a bit lower, maybe the same, and vice versa. The resting could be that way compared to them. But let's check this out. So for the resting, So for resting, our high number was 120, and let's subtract our low number, which was 68 for the resting. Again, 120 for the resting on this side right here, 120, and then 68 right there, okay? And that should give us a value of 52. So the range for the resting was over 52 beats per minute from 120 to 60, or from 68 to 120, I should say. And then let's say we got for after exercise, let's put AE for after exercise, our low value was 86, and our high value was 146. So we'll say 146 minus 86, and that should give us 60, okay? So you can show these, which I recommend showing these for your spread, but then also make a statement comparing them, okay? So with this one, I would say, back to pen, to black. So let's say that the after exercise, after exercise um, is a bit higher with a range of 60 compared to 52. Compared to 52. Hope y'all can read that all pretty well. I know I scribble scratched quite a bit on there. So again, our shape distribution of both, of both are similarly skewed right. But the outliers, the resting has a possible at 120 and the after exercise is possible at 146. The center is a bit higher for the after exercise uh, pulse rates because 
since there is a higher value compared to the resting. And then for our spread, we have a range of 52 for our resting and a range of 60 for our after exercise. So with that, that takes care of 1.2 and hopefully you get a little bit of understanding of stem plots and describing using socks.